TI Inspire Click Pad vs. Touch Pad Pros and Cons When my school district over a year ago decided to switch from the TI-84 series calculators to the new TI Inspires, I received some training in its use. At the end of the training, they told me that I could have one to use if I signed out for it, and I did so. Over the succeeding months of the school year, I learned to get around in it a little bit. It was hard to do very much since I was still using TI-84 Pluses in the classroom. In July of this year, I attended my state's math teacher conference in San Antonio. A big reason for going was to receive additional training in the use of the TI Inspire calculator. About the first thing I did when I got there was to visit the large TI booth in the exhibit hall. I went to ask a question about how to get out of the table view. When I showed the TI rep my calculator, he told me that I had an outdated operating system, one that had an opening screen like this one at the upper left. After he downloaded the new 2.0 or whatever operating system it was to my calculator, this is what my opening page looked like, the screenshot in the lower right, and this is what the newest version of the operating system looks like still today. I think that the latest version is version 2.1 that came out, I believe, in July of this year. Then I went to a TI Inspire training session at the conference, and when I went into the session, this is what I brought in hand, freshly updated from the TI booth, and I had all my training, little though it was, on this calculator. But they had calculators for us to use at the session, and this is what they provided for all of us to use, the one on the right. The presenter explained that this was a new keypad that came out earlier this year to address suggestions for improvements from users of the original keypad shown at the left. This change got me kind of frustrated because it's hard to become familiar with a new technology just for the software, how it operates, etc. But to bring in a new type of keypad complicates things. That guy there is me with my angry face. I wouldn't say I was angry about this, but more like frustrated. After getting the training and coming into the school year, I didn't have TI Inspires for my students at the beginning of this year, but got my TI Inspires for the classroom up and running in October. One problem I have is that now I have 19 calculators with the original Inspire keypad and 9 with the newer touch touchpad, and having these different types of keypads has caused some confusion in the classroom. Fortunately, with the TI Inspire Teacher Edition software that I can use on my smart board to present into the classroom, there is a key that can toggle between the original version pictured here or the touchpad pictured here. Now we'll look at a side-by-side -side comparison, and we'll bring up the keypads themselves to have a closer look. That's the original click pad on the left and the newly designed touchpad on the right. The first thing you might notice is for that on the click pad, the text keys are scattered all over the keyboard. There are the little green keys in the center as well as the little gray keys on the perimeter of the keypad. But on the touchpad, the text keys and punctuation keys are brought down to the bottom portion of the keypad here, shown by the red rectangle. In the BlackBerry style age that we live in, many people, if not most people, prefer the touchpad for that feature alone. But it's not without cost because the keys for the touchpad had to be made smaller to account for the space lost to the text keys. On the click pad, one issue I've experienced and that you cannot see from this presentation is that the text and punctuation keys are raised above the level of the other keys, making it easy to accidentally press one of those little keys while going about your business pressing the larger numbers and operation keys on the calculator. One feature not as obvious from view but very apparent in use is the click pad itself versus the touch pad itself. On the click pad portion, you can move one click at a time across a graph, but on the touch pad, it scrolls on touch as if you were using an iPhone. One thing that can be an issue with the touchiness of the touch pad is that when you're trying to use the grab feature at the center of the pad, here shown in the center of each pad, 
With a touch pad, the cursor may not stay firmly in place. Fortunately, you can make the pad stable by clicking the control key first before pressing the center hold key at the middle of the pad. Other than being in different locations, the keys are pretty much the same. But on the click pad, you get to the documents menu by pressing control, then the home key. But on the touch pad, the calculator has its own documents key here at the upper right of the touch pad. On the click pad, the on off key is here at the lower left. But on the touch pad, the on off key is at the upper right in conjunction with the home key. As a user myself, I'm able to appreciate pros and cons of each type of pad. But as a teacher, I think we should prefer the newer touchpad. It's more user friendly for those used to iPhones and the text pad features of the newer cell phones and Blackberries. The 10 with the touchpad that I had had, I was given 10 calculators, but one of the keypads is malfunctioning, so now I have nine of them. And uh, they were shipped standard later after my first 20 arrived. It will cost the school or school district $10 a piece or $190 total to get all my available click pads replaced with touch pads, but I'll try to get it done somehow. As for that single malfunctioning pad, I'll call 1-800-TI-CARES and TI will take care of it for me, I'm quite certain. This has been TI Inspire, click pad versus touch pad, pros and cons. Thanks for viewing.